Hi everyone. You might notice the backdrop is a little different today and it's because I'm actually in Mexico and Nicholas isn't going to be joining me on the show today but actually I have a special guest who's been on the show before but I'm really excited to have him on again. It's actually Peter. Yeah. Say hello to Peter. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this show because, you know, I feel like whenever we have these online retreats, which there's one coming up very soon, it's always like, you know, whatever's in our awareness, it's, it's what's coming for our healing, if that's what our purpose is and what our desire is. And it's like this next online retreat is about stepping into magnitude. So it's almost like, okay, I, I think maybe that might be my theme coming up. You know, it's like that seems to be really strong in the mind and yeah I just thought maybe we'd speak on that a little bit because even how I came to Mexico it was like this huge inspiration just struck me and it was amazing it, like I was like so lit up my rockets were fr firing like a thousand percent and I was like so like I don't know happy and excited and inspired and and, you know, it's like in the mind, when you start coming closer to the light, it's like that's when all the other, all the darkness and everything else seems to come up too, because it's like, it's like, as David says a lot, you know, it's like you come closer to the light and then you, you rush back to darkness. And it's like this going closer, rushing back. It's like, whoa, what, can I go closer? It's like, I don't know. And it's like, it's like the movie Aquaman, you know, he was really, uh, I don't know how many of you guys have seen the movie, but in the movie he was really coming into his strength in the, in the way of like he needed to claim his inheritance as the, I think, ocean master or something like that, right? Um, or, or basically, the king. yeah, the king of Atlantis and to unify um, both worlds of Atlantis and like on the land. And, and he had so much unworthiness and Basically, he was just taking his steps to come closer and closer to the light and really claim his inheritance and know who he is. But at some point, uh, it was a really beautiful scene because him and him and this girl or his mighty companion, they, uh, yeah, they, he had this light and he went off of the boat and he was going closer to where this trident was, which was like a symbol of him like fully taking on his inheritance and. And it was like a, it was like going through the darkness for him because he had this little light, like this little flare with him, and they were just sinking through the ocean, and a huge swarm of these monsters or creatures were like closing in on them, and it was like, it was basically like going through the darkness to the light. And I even had this dream, um, like shortly before I came here, where. Yeah, I was just having the Skype call with Carolina and we sunk into like this meditation and like my mind just like lit up and it was like this mystical experience and and it was amazing. And then when I went to sleep that night, I I basically my mind rushed back to darkness. Like there were all these like past images where like, you know, I was with my ex-girlfriend all of a sudden and and I was with like memories with family and I was in the park with family. And we were just sitting there, and then I could hear like some kind of like beating under under the ground, like drum beats or something like that. And uh, all of a sudden, I heard I don't know from where, but I heard that the insects were taking over the world. And then the the ruler, the master of the insects, was uh, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I didn't really know what that meant, but. Um, when I went and I connected with Jeffrey, it was really great because I got a lot of insight and it was like, yeah, actually, I really trust Jeffrey as like the symbol in my mind. Like I really have this like deep trust for him. And in the dream, he's like the ruler of the insects and the insects are literally taking over the world and taking over that, that good memory or that dream. And then like the scene shifted and I was underground in some cavern. And it was like flooded with all kinds of insects. Like they had like completely taken over and it was like really dark and this and that. And, and yeah, when I just joined with him, he's like, yeah, remember Aquaman? That reminds me of that scene where he's like really getting swarmed by those creatures. And, and, and then it's like, yeah, Jeffrey's like the symbol of trust in my mind. So it kind of, I was like, oh yeah, it's just like my mind rushed back to darkness, like back to the littleness. 
And so, yeah, I feel like that was one of the things I just wanted to talk about. Because even when I was growing up, like, I just remember, you know, I was like a young kid, and I've talked about this a little before, but I think I was like 12 years old watching Batman Begins, and, you know, he's like this little boy with his parents, and then they're on a train, and his father's like, yeah, this is our, um, our, our business or whatever. But I just felt some kind of, like, urge for some kind of magnitude and, and it was so distorted you know um and I had no idea like what the feeling really was but it was just some kind of feeling like oh like I don't know there's something more and and now it's like as we step into our inspirations I can see like my mind um tries to go back into like these memories from the past like these these good memories and, and really the course tells us like there's no there's really no good or bad memories. They're all to be let go of because you don't really even know the difference between pain and joy. They're, like the love will always be there, but it's like, it's all images. So it all has to be like forgiven in the end. And yeah, so I would just notice my mind coming back to these kind of memories. And, and yeah, so I did want to talk about too because, you know, I feel like we're both actually everyone, it's really like a step into magnitude right now. Mm -hmm. And we've had some similar themes of like communication and, you know, like speaking up. And, and I've noticed for myself, like when I'm feeling prompted to speak up and communicate something, if I don't do it right away or if I delay or just don't do it in general, I'll feel like this unworthiness. Or it's like if I don't follow any kind of prompt, then I'll feel the unworthiness coming back and this littleness and et cetera. Like, even, you know, we have these projects we use for awakening and, and, you know, one of my priority projects is like this Google ad grants thing. And it's really like inspiring to me and it feels so good when I work on it, but there's like also such a resistance to working on it. And it's funny, it's just like a symbol of like, yeah, it's like scared of actually being happy. And, um, but, but it's good because there's so many prompts that come in with that just to, keep pushing you because last night I, I had all these dreams that were pushing me towards like hey remember google ads like it makes you feel happy remember <laughs> to keep working on it so it's like really coming into that light and even if we rush back to darkness just remembering to just keep going <laughs> and yeah I wanted to talk to you about something because you know yesterday was a really big day for you and you got married actually it was like a big wedding here and mm -hmm. with Helena and and yeah, I just wanted to hear your experience about that and how you feel like that has to do with yourself stepping into magnitude. Mm. Just any experiences around that. Yeah. Well, the commitment feels huge. Um, yeah, because it's like we've, we've had, you know, a couple of weeks now where we've been kind of really concentrating on, you know, what are our vows actually. And, um, and each time we tried to join on it, it's like, no, it's not time. It's not time yet. Um, and, and we want to really feel it until it was like actually the morning of the wedding and we didn't even have the, the vows solid. But it was, it was funny because I still had the, the thought in my mind of like what it was. And we both had the essence of like what it was in our mind. And that was like, it feels like we're marrying the universe. There, there's something of that. And, um, and, and actually at the, at the wedding, I really felt that too. Like um, some of you may have seen it online too, because we did like a live Facebook live video of the wedding. And that was the thing that I, you know, I really felt it, it was like, it, it's more than just the two of us getting married. It, it's really like saying yes to, to, to everyone, to the whole sonship. And it was a prayer for myself at the beginning of the year as well is, is like, um, cause we seem to have like the community setting here and, and for myself, um, I had this prayer at the start of the year. It's like, I want to feel everyone in my mind. I want to feel like this, this care and this communication going out to everybody, um, symbolic, like in, in the, in the ministry and in the community, but that's just like, it's my stepping stone to like expanding out to, to, to everything. I, I know it is. And so like communication seems to be like this huge um, top, like theme. And, you know, Andy and I have been given like a role um, of like communication overseers in the, in the community. And, and for that, it brings up a, a lot because, you know, the ego always wants to pull back 
you know, um, wants to say, okay, okay, that's enough. We can just, you know, step back now and just kind of like gather ourselves because it gets freaked out every time we move towards communication. And usually like we have these uplifting experiences of like joining with our brothers here and like getting so uplifted and going like, yeah, wow, that's great. Why did I join all the time? That feels so good. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, I'll just get back to my thing now. You know, just subtly, you know, you get back into some, some old rhythm and then, yeah, and then, then you get like, before you know it, you just feel lost again. But that communication is what we keep on getting drawn back to. And I feel like that's, that's the practice, like that it, it's, you can, yeah. And then like when, when there's not a constant communication, it feels harder to step into it. Like again, like the next time. So it's like trying to keep in, in that flow of communication too, where, where keep, keep on top of the wave kind of feeling. So yeah, yeah that, I mean, that feels like synonymous with the magnitude with me, like being in, in full communication feels like it's being in, like, like all the channels are open to, to the light and there's no escape, you know? Like, so, so the ego gets really freaked out. It's like, ah! But, but that's where we feel the happiest. That's where we yeah. feel the real uplift. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that because when I was really inspired to come down here, I couldn't stop calling everyone mm. and like no one had to tell me to do it because I was just so inspired. So I, I like called you and I called just everyone and I just felt so connected. It was just, just like what you said, all the channels, I just felt connected everywhere. And it, that's what it, it felt like magnitude because, you know, the magnitude is not going to be in form because actually it says in the chapter, littleness versus mag magnitude that the world was made out of littleness. So it's like nothing, it has nothing to do with the form, but it's more like what's guided and following the inspiration. So mm. I just love that feeling when I was like just communicating with everyone. Like, yeah, the channels were open and I just felt like, yeah, everywhere actually. Yeah, and that kind of feels like like the, the purpose of the, the marriage too, like just with, with Helena, like, cause we've been, you know, we're always spending so much time with each other, even like working in the same room. And, and it's like this constant um, opportunity for me to be so like, you know, am I open? Am I communicating or am I hiding something? And she'll call me out on it too. Like, you know, when I'm on my computer and I'm doing something that I, you know, that is a distraction, she's like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, hey, you know, <laughs> and I, I'm brought back again. But it's kind of like, I, and I've asked for that seemingly because, you know, it, it's, it's coming in as like a really helpful thing to like stay, stay in communication, stay open. And also like just to notice where it is that I'm hiding. Cause I, I think, you know, my personality, I have like this tendency of like, um, you know, going quiet and just kind of like, can, can kind of go into my own head and into my own space. And I've kind of mentioned it be before of like, if I'm, I find, you know, if I'm joining one-on-one -on -one with somebody, you know, I feel pretty good with like communication, but I just notice some weird things. Sometimes if it's like two people and, and me, I, I suddenly just stand back and I just start watching the conversation and I go quiet. Right. And it's just like, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's a really, it's a really a weird thing. And it's just like, why aren't I, why aren't I engaged right now? Why am I? And, and there's something about that. Like, so it feels like I'm, I'm being called to see that pattern a lot with like the communication, like that we have like phone calls and everything, but even just, you know, like, yeah, with, with Helena and it, at times, like also when, cause you know, with the relationship too, you can see the intensity coming up and the attack thoughts seem to be coming up more frequently and parts of my mind that I haven't really looked at. And it's always like, you know, I have this tendency of like, I can just kind of go quiet and it's just like, hey, where have you gone? <laughs> where have you gone? Speak, share, share. It's like, you know, and there's an anger under that of like mm. trying to control, trying to like, you know, stay, keep in some kind of littleness or something like that. <laughs> I don't know, it's a practice for me. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Because what comes to mind too for me is like, you know, prioritization, which is really just following whatever the Holy Spirit wants mm. you to do in the moment. And just to bring it back to like this project that really feels inspiring for me, like I can just see how it's like, it's like I'll just work on other things that aren't guided and then I'll just kind of clam up like you said. And, and then, yeah, I think even last night I had these dreams like, you know, I was, and it feels like some kind of apathy too, like the clamming up for me because last night I had these dreams where I was in some kind of house and it was like one of our centers and I was looking out the window and there was like this shed and the shed was on fire and it was like burning up. 
and it was like, and I was like telling everyone, I was like, hey, we need to put out that fire. But like, I just kept saying that and not actually doing anything myself. And, uh, and no one was doing anything because it wasn't really for them anyways. It was like really for me. And just nothing happened. It was just, mm. the shed was just burning. And I was just like staring at it and not moving. And it just reminded me of like, it was like a strong symbol of the Holy Spirit saying like, hey, like there's this high priority function I gave to you so that you can be happy. And you're choosing littleness instead. And yeah, you, you can tell everyone else all you want that it's like, hey, I'm not getting to my high priority project, but you're, you're not the one to put out the fire. Like, you need to be the one to do that. And so I woke up today and I was like, oh, wow, that was a really strong symbol. Like, maybe I should get right into that. And I just started working on it and I started feeling really good already. And it's like, that just to me is like some kind of symbol of like not wanting to go into the magnitude. Because really it's like, it's whatever the means is provided by the Holy Spirit that's going to bring us into that magnitude. We don't know how we're going to do it ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because like, yeah, I don't know, I've had this, um, after the wedding ceremony yesterday and we, we came back and, you know, came back home and we sat down and we're like, what are we going to do now? And, uh, you know, just kind of feeling out what's the movie or what's the theme and, and, um, and Helena had the theme of like, uh, like, like a betrayal or a guilt, you know, up in the mind and wasn't even really aware of what it was, but it felt like some block in the mind. And, um, and then this has been this kind of like ongoing prompt the past like week that she's had to watch the movie Dark City. So seemingly on the night of our <laughs> wedding, we watched the movie Dark City, which, kind of <laughs> which seems really funny, but it's, it was so fun. It was great actually when we got into it because I can see something with that as well. Like there's, you know, the, the wedding was so bright and so beautiful and it felt like, like a couple of times we're like watching, it's like, this looks like a movie set. Like it just feels like a film set. Like what's kind of going on and, and how it was playing out. And then, so there's some kind of like feeling of like, but there's some, something there blocking the, the, the great love, like, you know, the, the full love that we want to experience. And so we're watching that movie, Dark City, and um, yeah, something about it is like the attack thoughts. And you mentioned that, that scene in Aquaman too, where he, he dives down into the mind and all the monsters t start to swarm in. And it's the same thing in, in that Dark City movie, like, you know, that when he cottons on to like, there's something seriously wrong with the world and what's kind of going on here. And like, um, he, he starts to get a hint of that. Then the attack thoughts start to come in more frequently. Like they're like, it's kind of like saying like, it's, it's his own mind being reflected of like, he's going to go for the truth now. He actually wants the magnitude. He doesn't want to hang on to the, the illusion anymore. And then the attack thoughts in the mind start to come in and just like, ah. And, and there's even that scene in, in Dark City too, where it's like, there's a point where he's been battling it out on the surface and like pointing like the blame out there and trying to fix things in the world. But there's one point where he just has to like drop within the mind and, and in Dark City, he goes underground, like there's this alien species like controlling the world, but he has to go right down there and like face the attack thoughts like straight on in the source, like right in, in the depth of his mind. So there's something of that, I don't know, I, I've been feeling that too, cause like I've been feeling the intensity lately, like there's a really bright symbol of like getting married in the commitment that I made and, and the commitment to like want to feel everyone and really feel this depth of the love. And at the same time, like the, the intensity is coming up in the mind um, pretty strongly as well. And, and this morning is like, you know, I watched that movie too. And this morning I woke up with fear in my mind and, and I said to Helene, this is like, I got this fear in my mind and I don't know where to go with it actually. And I just kind of like, you know, expressed it, but it felt like I was just hitting a dead end. And then I went into the bathroom and it's just like, going, what am I doing? Like, this is kind of going nowhere. And I remembered in the, in the ceremony yesterday, David mentioned, um, you know, it's about, you know, choosing to take the high road is one of the things that he said, like, and, and that just kind of reflected in my mind. It's like, oh, it's a choice. Actually now it's like, I can choose for the truth. Do I want to really choose into like the, the fear thoughts that are coming in or do I actually want to really choose for the truth? It just kind of came in as a clear choice. And I, and I came out and I said that to her in the bedrooms, like, I want to choose the truth today. And she's like, I can join you in that. Mm. 
And so something felt so beautiful about that to me. But like, there's something of that too. Like we're getting closer to that choice for magnitude and the fear thoughts are kind of like getting more intense around us. And it's like, oh, and, and it really is that choice. Like, okay, I don't want to buy that. I want to join with you and in, in, in my brother in the truth now. Like having to choose that over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, and I think another thing for me too is just remembering to just really stay like clueless about this all. It's like, I don't really know what's going on. I, I can't control what's going on and letting those defenses down. So it's like whatever needs to be healed or like if there's attack down there, attack thoughts, it's like letting down the defenses so I yeah. can see them because this, this recurring defense that comes in my mind is like, I know what I'm doing. Like, mm. I think I know what I'm doing. And then that becomes sort of like this block to like, just like something deeper down there, like a hurt or a pain or a deep loss or something, some kind of emotion that is like not being allowed to come to the surface because there's a fear around it. Because Lisa came over and yeah, she was just reminding me of that. It's like, yeah, it's just, we just really want to stay in like a state of cluelessness. So. I feel like that's my prayer to, to just like, okay, it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, yeah, like a child or like a baby. It's like the Holy Spirit's just taking care of us. And as much as we can to just try not to be in the way of the healing, because it's mm. like, we're not the healer. We can't really do this ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we've been given the mighty companions we need to to just allow you know I don't know allow the f dismantling like allow the, the the falling apart of like the self concept and it does look kind of you know freaky it, it can feel a bit freaky at times when it's like I don't know what's going on mm. it's like I don't know who I am I don't know what's going on where I am what I'm doing and it's it's kind of like very disorienting and it's kind of like it's those times where it's always like that's the purpose of the Mighty Companions, it's like to give each other the space to fall, fall apart or seemingly fall apart and be held and know we don't have to actually do anything, it's just like allow it, allow that process. And th there is a, like, there's the choice in the mind to like stay connected, like, you know, stay with me, you, you are with me and trust that, you know, everything is going as it should be, trust like the dismantling is happening but you're held and you're safe. So, and, and that's all that we, were, it's just like an encouragement to know that you don't have to try to fix anything now. Yeah, you can just like let it, let it be. Yeah. Because yeah, it was coming up for me and I just sank down underneath it. Like the, what was coming up was like this, I think I know what I'm doing thing. And I just saw, the other day that like underneath is actually like like a frantic energy like a panic like mm. oh wow I've actually like really messed things up it's like yeah like hold it together like it'll never be the same just do what you can to to, to make things okay but you you know it'll never be like like it used to be like it'll never be perfect or something like that like this deep guilt and sadness is like was down there and yeah, I feel like that's just my prayer to just keep sinking below that and it's like, it's okay, it's okay. You can allow those emotions to come up and mm. and just noticing whenever that energy comes in, like, I think I know what I'm doing. I think I know something. Yeah. I'm trying to hold something together, but really underneath it's like, like when I was, when I was like in elementary school, this counselor came and visited our class and said, what is it that really upsets you? And I actually wrote down what feels upsetting to me is when my mom drops and breaks like a glass or like a plate or something. And I never understood why that felt, invoked some kind of guilt or sadness in me or loss. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, the other day when I was just, that flashed in my mind and again and I just saw it was because it's just this feeling of like it's broken forever and like 
it can never be put back together kind mm. of feeling. And that's like that whole frantic panic is like underneath this, like, I think I know what I'm doing. I think I know something. I can do this. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm fine. It's like, that's like on top of this energy, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we have to like make that, like such a powerful commitment we make here. So we know like this, like we've made the commitment first, we're, we're held by spirit, and then we can just like allow that breaking apart to happen, but yeah, it's just like it, we couldn't like, without that kind of trust like put forward first, this is like, yeah, we'd never be able to, to do this because like the ego just feels like it's getting decimated. Mm. I feel like that's like the mask of the world. It's like there's all that panic underneath and then there's like the mask that's like, mm. yeah, I know what I'm doing. It's, it's all good. Mm. Don't worry about it. You know, it's mm. like... I don't remember Dark City that well because it's been a while, but masks were some kind of theme in that, I think, too, right? Or at least it was on the poster of the movie. Well, or they all have these identities that are based in guilt that aren't actually them. You know, they have roles in the world that they keep on trying to uphold. They have guilt from their past that they keep on trying to make amends for and things mm -hmm. like that. But all their memories are actually fake. They're imprinted into their mind. They're not who they really are. And it's like a distraction. It's a massive distraction where they're trying to make up for something. It's, it's a personality, mm. but they're actually like called deeper. And that's what, you know, we've put our purpose so strongly out in front. It's like, we only really want the truth. We want to go for the magnitude. We want to really go there. And everything else has to kind of you know, dismantle and fall apart. Mm. <laughs> but that's why we, we are like communicating, like in these communication roles, is so like, so we can just like keep so open and keep those channels open the whole time and, and give that ego so, like such a little room to kind of, you know, call us in the mind and like talk to us and keep on trying to convince us. It's like, no, keep listening to the voice of truth. Keep on listening to the ones who have been given you to re remind you of the truth. S stay in that calling. Mm. It's like, stay, stay focused. <laughs> I think there's even a line that Reminds me of that. Yeah, here it is. It's, um, yeah, this is littleness versus magnitude. It's in chapter 15, section three. And I don't even know whose book this is, but it was in the room and, and they actually highlighted this part. So I was like, yeah, this is really good. <laughs> so it's paragraph three. It says, um, there's a deep responsibility you owe yourself and one you must learn to remember all the time. The lesson may seem hard at first, but you will learn to love it when you realize that it is true and is but a tribute to your power. You who have sought and found littleness, remember this. Every decision you make stems from what you think you are and represents the value that you put upon yourself. Believe the little can content you and by limiting yourself, you will not be satisfied. For your function is not little and it is only by finding your function and fulfilling, fulfilling it that you can escape from littleness. And it says, there is no doubt about what your function is, for the Holy Spirit knows what it is. There is no doubt about its magnitude, for it reaches you through Him from magnitude. You do not have to strive for it, because you have it. All your striving must be directed against littleness, for it does require vigilance to protect your magnitude in this world. Yeah. Yeah, it just says, to hold your magnitude and perfect awareness in a world of littleness is a task the little cannot undertake. Yet it is asked of you, in tribute to your magnitude and not your littleness. And then it says, nor is it asked of you alone. The power of God will support every effort you make on behalf of his dear son. Search for the little and you deny yourself his power. God is not willing that his son be content with less than everything. 
for he is not content without his son, and his son cannot be content with less than his father has given him. Given him. So yeah, I just love that because it says, you know, your, your function is not little and the Holy Spirit knows what it is. And really it's like your function is forgiveness, but in this world, you know, the Holy Spirit uses specifics. So it's like, he'll tell you like what your function is. And if your function looks like some kind of project and or some kind of role with communication, it's like fully taking that on as a way of accepting the means towards magnitude. And then just seeing all the little ways that we try to go towards littleness by not going towards the functions, especially when it's guided in. And just, I think that's what it's talking about, like all your striving must be directed against littleness and having the vigilance to protect it. Mm. I think we've actually just ran out of time. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll leave it at that, and thank you so much, Pete, for being on the show. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Yeah, yeah thank you. Such yeah. a such a beautiful theme, stepping into magnitude. <laughs> yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us, and and yeah, the show will be every Sunday at ten thirty uh, MST. Okay, thank you. Bye.